So the 2020 Norco Sight C1. I've been looking forward to demoing one of these for pretty much since they came out. They got straight on my radar. I was pretty excited. And uh, full 29er. The size seemed right. You got 455 reach, 1222, I think it is wheelbase. 435 chain stay, which is what I'm used to anyway. So 435 to 440 seems like bang on for, for this kind of bike, for my size, this size. Uh, straight out of the gate, it's, uh, well, we'll talk about the specs. So Super Deluxe Select Plus, which is just a three position lockout. Lyric Ultimate, which should be absolutely sublime, but it's not, so that needs a service for sure. It's a little bit um, uncharacteristic of the lyrics that I've been I've been riding. I've tested probably this, probably the fourth Lyric Ultimate I've been on, or third at least. And uh, yeah, it's not, it's not on the level that it should be. So that needs a service. Apart from that, uh, the carbon bike feels stiff enough. It feels, you know, like most carbon bikes. It doesn't feel weak. A lot of some of the carbon bikes I've ridden feel tinny and weak. This actually feels fairly strong. I wouldn't pick it over an alloy outside of weight, but uh, it does feel strong. 175 dropper, which is killer, perfect. So you can get it right out of the way and have a good climbing position. You don't have to compromise there. Uh, Diety seat. It's. Uh, it's not great, but it's good. It was good enough for me. I, yeah, I got uh, nine climbs, all laps. I've done nine laps on this bike. Seven today, two yesterday. Or uh, well, three kind of yesterday, but two proper ones. And uh, it's good enough, but after having the WTB Vault, I'd never go a seat like this again. I'd never go, I don't think I'd, I, it'd be hard to find a better seat than that for me, for my booty, for, for whatever. I can climb all day on that thing. Um, Dighty, carbon handlebars which it comes with alloy handlebars but the carbon bars felt okay I was getting a little bit a little bit sore at the end but I don't think it was a bar I think it's more so the fork because I've got it in a I've got it set up in a compromised position it's kind of like a uh, it's rough enough it's good enough but I can't get them perfect because they don't feel great when I set them up to my go-to on a lyric that I know feels killer they don't feel very good so um, yeah handlebar was okay Brakes are phenomenal, RSC codes, they're so good. They're so, they're just, they're worry free. Apart from the, uh, there's a warranty issue with the with the barrel adjuster on this rear brake. That'll have to be fixed so the barrel adjust doesn't actually work. Uh, contact point adjust. How does it ride? Everyone wants to know how these things ride. There's so many good reviews on the net. Uh, so many people talking about them. And there's one thing that I will uh, agree with a lot of guys. This rear shock, it's not, you can't set this bike up with two tokens and expect to ride it without damaging stuff. It's just, it just doesn't work. It honestly doesn't work. So the right aligned idea, they give you all these metrics. They give you the, uh, the, you know, the right bar height, the bar width, the tokens and the pressure in the front, which is cool to have a starting point, definitely. In the back, they say two tokens. And I've seen on a couple of reviews that they're, when they contact Norco, they're quite adamant on not going any more than two tokens. Now, I don't know who's testing them, but if you're riding this with two tokens and you think it feels good, then I've got a 1996 Giant to sell you. So anyway, apart from that, I went three tokens, felt all right. I went back to the two tokens to see what it would feel like there. And it just first uh, huck to flat. It wasn't a big huck to flat, but it was big enough uh, where I'd never ex never expect to, to blow through travel like that. It just clanged off the bottom. I thought, Jesus, like, no. No good. So cruised down the bottom, changed it up, went back to three. Didn't quite like like it at three. Went uh, Nardog and four and two standard tokens. So four and a half tokens into this rear shock. Uh, 185 psi I started at. Felt really really good. If anything, still just a little bit, little bit choppy, a little bit stout. But all the support and the spring curve felt right. The curve of the spring. So when you're playing with configuration with the rear shock or even the fork, you're looking for a certain curve. You're looking for, a, you know, it's like a hammock to, to catch it. You, you, want, you want the bike to feel good all the way through. You don't want it to feel soft and then hard. You want it to be, you want it to be right. And you can't just go, oh, he used four and a half tokens on that bike, so on my bike, I'm gonna use four and a half tokens. It's different for every bike. You're having to do it in relation to the curve of the, you know, the kinematics or whatever they call it, of the design of the bike. So some bikes feel, uh, 
uh, super progressive with two tokens. Others feel still really wallowy with four and a half. So this one's progressive enough with that four and a half. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you need a magneg. I definitely wouldn't say you need a, need a magneg. Perfect candidate for a coil. I'd put a short travel coil on it. Um, but yeah, once I got to to four and a half tokens, the 185 felt really, really good. I'm about 75-ish on the bike, maybe 76. Uh, dressed up, shoes, helmet, everything, gear. 180. Perfect, perfect. Right at the bottom. We're getting right at the bottom of the of the uh, travel, but not clanging, none of that. And it is butter smooth. The angles are killer. It charges. The only thing letting it down is the fork. It's the only thing letting it down. And I thought I'd never ever say that. Being, it's just simply came out of the factory too dry. I think it's too dry. I looked down the I looked down the tube just before when I opened it up again, and it's definitely dry in the tube. So there's no grease on top of the. Uh, on the top hat and yeah it's just it just doesn't feel great it doesn't feel like a lyric ultimate so that's the only thing that was holding this bike back little bit of uh, just chop in the front and not the grip not that suppleness that you that you get uh, it's got cush core front and rear 22 24 ended up going 21 and 23 and that gave me more compliance uh, I'm not big on the cush core in the front I don't think it's necessary but uh, it to be honest it didn't feel like it slowed me down it climbs well I had no problems climbing up the uh, Simon Anstey's hill here. And right next to the bottom of the uh, Wildside DH, you've got a fire road that's pretty steep. It's got three, it's basically three long pinch climbs with a couple of little plateaus to to let you chill out in the middle. But every climb, no worries. Yeah, you're getting up there in maybe 10 minutes, maybe a little bit more. Um, so it climbs fine, it climbs no different to my patrol. Like I said, the angles on this bike are perfect. It's exactly what I wanted my Remedy to be. My Remedy needed to be a little longer because I bought I bought the 18.5 and it was too small. It was only like a 440 reach. So uh, my Remedy needed to be a little longer. Uh, the travel was fine, obviously. This is kind of like, I guess it's kind of like a slash. It's basically a slash um, with better, better climbing angles. So you got 64 head, 77.3 C-tube angle effective and uh, it just trundles along. Don't pay too much attention to the rider line. Don't get too caught up in, this is what the manufacturer recommends. A lot of the time the manufacturers are fairly on the ball with their recommendations, but not all the time. So you've got to still come in with an open mind and go, yep, okay, that's what they yeah, that's what they want. Doesn't seem to be working for me. Let's try something different. Let's not get too married to it. So uh, I've been on this bike two days. It's only a short test. I don't have it for long. I've got to return it in the morning. Um, so I would have loved to spend another couple of days on it now that I've got it dialed, but it basically took me the whole test to get it dialed. So if I was a little more open-minded and didn't pay too much attention to the rider line, I would have had it dialed sooner. But uh, it is what it is. I've got a couple of good runs on it. And when it's set up, dude, this thing's so good. This thing is so good. But you've got to go through the process. And if you've got the uh, Super Lux and Lyric uh, set up on it, for sure, either get a coil or get a Nardog token and set this thing up right and you, you can't go wrong. You literally can't go wrong. It's just, it's literally right on 30%, maybe 31, 32% sag, like just on. But there's still plenty of pedal clearance. It's perfect. The X01 drivetrain, uh, flawless. It came with some pretty crappy lube and it got out here because it's sand and silt. It got real chewy real quickly, so I had to take it home clean the derailleur, clean the drivetrain completely, and then I just loaded it up with squirt, and it's been flawless all day, so. Uh, X01, crisp as, really, really light under finger, which I really, really like. Uh, the derailleur, I don't think the clutches are any better than the GX clutch, or maybe it's a bit better than the NX clutch, but uh, I don't know if the X01 is worth the extra money over the GX, to be honest, and if you rip it off, you're gonna probably replace it with a GX anyway, because an X01 derailleur's you know, dentist money, so. Uh, what can I say, the wheels, wheels feel good. DT Swiss, reliable. Uh, I mentioned in my first look about the DT Swiss rear hub. Now this is a ratchet, and I believe it's probably got the, it's probably the 36, it's probably 36 tooth ratchet. Uh, I wouldn't know until I open it up, but it's good enough. It is definitely good enough. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of technical climbing, you want the 54. Uh, it's silent, it's really quiet, so they've obviously packed that full of grease. Uh, they're straight and true still. 
Uh, yeah, good bike. I don't know about the weight with these cush cores, but it doesn't feel like it's doesn't feel like it's overburdenly heavy. It's it's not light. XO plus cush cores. Uh, I should have weighed it, but I didn't have the scales at the time, so um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's probably 15 kilos. Uh, I haven't calibrated my my arms for a while, but that's about 15 kilos. 15.4, I'm gonna say. So. Um, Keep an eye on the Instagram. I'll I'll, uh, I'll weigh it a bit later, and we'll see exactly what it is. But overall, you know what? I think they've done a good job. But they're mis they're misdirecting people with this right aligned rubbish. They're they're giving you yeah you know, giving you a good baseline, but they need to update and reassess that rear shock setup on the right aligned. So uh, yeah, thank you so much to the owner of this bike for letting me borrow it, man. Because I've been hanging to ride one of these and. For you to fork out your hard earned for something you know as bling as this this thing's top of the charts it's uh it's quite a good setup you know the only thing that would make it more bling would be a uh, access dropper and access drivetrain but that stuff's unnecessary that's again lawyer money so thanks man love it oh also quickly before i go sam hill the nuke proof uh, I'm assuming it's still Horizon Enduro maybe, but they're the Enduro pedals. They're the new updated Sam Hill pedals. They are killer. They are really, really good. So they're exactly like the old ones. They feel more or less exactly like the old ones. They're killer. The shape is a little better. The shape is a little more uh, streamlined. You know, a lot of tiny, tiny little bit less chance of clipping a rock. Not a lot, but every bit, every bit counts, I guess. A little bit lighter as well. But... Um, they feel killer. Never ever had a foot move. Never had a foot move. So Killer pedals. Killer bike. Saddles average. Forks need a service. Thanks a lot.